So, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, work's just been not not crazy busy, but uh, the weather's been pretty hot and we've been going hard. So, I've been tired from that. I haven't done a lot of uh, YouTube stuff, obviously. Last weekend I went on a camping trip, went up to the Moon River, um, Georgian Bay area here in Ontario. And we only did 6K in, about 12K, a little portaging. Uh, I had to line the canoe up some rapids, walk it up, and we did a little bit of mild whitewater stuff. I had a great time anyway, kind of regret not bringing the cameras, but just uh, wanted to go on vacation. Anyways, Sunday afternoon here, I worked yesterday, just trying to take her easy, but you kind of feel like I gotta be doing something. Um, don't want to just sit around wasting time. So, something I've been wanting to do for a while is try and hand sharpen my silky handsaw. This is the newest blade I have. I've got three of these blades now, including this one, so two more here. And it's still pretty sharp. I just cut a slab of this off with it. This is a piece of sugar maple firewood, nice hardwood, and uh, it flew through it pretty good. So it's still sharp. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to take it off. And uh, I've had this saw for five or six years or more, maybe. I think this is my second oldest. Yeah. So it's even still in decent shape. Still feel it biting into that a little bit. Clamp. Yeah, so it's still got a bit of edge to it. Not going to try that one yet. We're going to start with the worst one just in case we do a horrible job because I have never researched how to do this. But maybe a little bit. I have some kind of, you know, I sharpen my own chainsaws. So I understand the concept and I'm just going to try and apply it to my handsaw. This is the oldest blade. You can see it's still got sap all over it, and it is, I can feel it's dull. There's a lot of. Yeah. It's doing okay, so I'm going to put this in the handle. We'll do a cut test with it, and then I got a tiny triangular file here, the smallest I could really find easily. I'm sure you get smaller ones. And we're going to try and touch these teeth up. And see how it cuts after. Just gonna have an easy day in the shed. It's uh, crazy weather. Yesterday there were tornado warnings. It's very windy outside. Uh, I'll show you. you can see she's fairly windy. So the first thing we got to do is change this blade. I don't think I can get that I'm done with my fingers. I don't feel like trying anyway. Not today. I might have a random Allen Holland key around here somewhere that fits that. What do we got here? What a guess. There we go. So we'll take this one out. It's my newest blade. I'm not gonna muck it up. I just practiced for a second on a really old shitty handsaw I have that I didn't even feel like it was worth the effort to try and fix. So we'll just leave that one out for now. Slipper. Slipper right back into the handle there. go. Make sure she's secure for the cut test. That's how old my scabbard is. Worn a hole in it from sheathing my handsaw. I know a lot of people are fans of taking these camping backpacking stuff. I do take this occasionally, but generally I, I don't just because I do use it every day at work and it's an important tool for me. So I don't want to wear it out mucking around on camping trips. I buy cheap $30 pull saws for that, a Corona razor, I think, a bit longer. I'll show you that maybe in another sharpening video or something if anyone's interested, but 
Silky's a great saw, especially the, I like the thicker blade, you know, the full size hand saws. I find the thinner ones do break. Um, it's easy to have them bind in wood and when you're pushing it back through, they snap. This, I can beat the crap out of it. I've never broken one of these and I've got three blades here. There's another one in this box. But it's the one that came with the saw, two more. I have never broken a blade on a Sukhoi, so go for the thicker ones. For what it is really, the weight, and what you can do with that tool, it's worth carrying. But I don't, I use cheap ones. Anyways, let's do a cut test. All right, it's a fresh, fresh edge. Yeah, I, I can tell that's pretty dull. Very dull. So that was definitely a lot harder than it was with uh, my full size or my sharper blade. This is what I cut with it, and it blew through it. This has got more rot in it. it looks like anyway. It's not perfectly hard wood, but good enough for cut tests. I'm gonna move you guys off the bench because it's shaking the camera around. As we can see there, this uh, silky Sugoi blade, 360 millimeter, is uh, quite dull. So we're gonna chuck her in the vise here. And I'll show you my sharpening theory here. Start the front of the back, like this way. I think this way will be better. Alright, so I hope you guys can see this. What I'm going to do is, just like a chainsaw, you're only going to sharpen these teeth one way. So I am going to... Sorry, I'm having a sip of beer. Push from the top of the cutter and you can see there's an angle, uh, you probably can't see, but there's an angle on the top of that. There's a little triangle. And that is the edge. You want to keep it perfectly flat, perpendicular, perpendicular to that edge. And just use the smallest part of the file. In a good file, you'll hear it cut and you'll see that face. Start to brighten up. And I tell you, I can feel a difference. It, it, there's no way, it's, if you keep the file flat, you're going to put an edge on it of some sort. If it's dull, you're not going to hurt it, unless you're really shaky or you're not on the right angle. Yeah, I can feel that cutting nicely. So that's one. This last tooth, yeah, it's got a bit of a... This tooth doesn't do much work. We'll give it a touch. Now, as with a chainsaw, I imagine you want to do the same number of strokes on each tooth roughly because there's no depth gauge on these saws there's a set to the teeth I'm not going to worry about that but that is actually putting a bit of an edge on there so I think I'm going to go for I don't know yeah. we'll go for six strokes per tooth This is not going to be perfect, but with time, as with most skills like this, practice, I'll get better at it. You could too. Yeah, I can feel that. I'm not even counting strokes, to be honest. <laughs> I'll try to count this one. Someone's going to get mad at me. Yeah, I can. that tooth is visibly nicked. It feels round. It doesn't even catch my finger. I can feel the file catching on the, the steel that's rolled over. So I'm just kind of bracing the file in my fingers. And a sharp file, you don't need too much downward pressure. I didn't even count that one. That is taking quite a bit of meat off of these. It's impressive. I'm not getting the angle right at all. I can see when I look at the profile of it from the front. But we're going to keep going. This is why I use the dullest blade. I'm going to steepen my angle up here, harder on the inside, that looks a little better. 
That looks a little better. So it's a pretty oddball angle on these things. My light is not great in here. It's hard to see, even for me. I can't imagine you guys can see much, but hopefully you're getting the idea. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. A few strokes like that on a hard angle. I'm getting it. That was five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, those are looking nice. I'm kind of excited about this now. Like, these blades aren't cheap. I, I think they're 80 bucks a piece. The whole saw and scabbard is 150 or you know, this isn't cheap stuff, it's good steel, and these are professional tools. So, if you can buy it, I paid 10 bucks for this, and that's a lot for a file, but I just grabbed it in a hardware store. If you went to a proper supplier, these things should be a buck or two, and they'll be a better, harder file. Now this is cutting good, I can feel it cutting, I can see filings coming off, and it is putting a nice point on these teeth. Now you do want to try and keep them as even as possible. As I said, two, three, four, five, six. See now that one I was a bit subtle on the angle. You, you know, yeah, let's go. You, when I'm sharpening a chainsaw, I don't necessarily count my strokes in the tooth. I keep filing until the tooth looks like it's sharp again and it's come to a point. So with this, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm counting. I'm trying not to do too, too many strokes. And I can see, I don't need to mark these teeth. If you look closely, you can see which tooth has the last fresh edge and the next one in line that you need to sharpen. Yeah, that's cutting great. This feels like it's actually going to work. I'm just kind of learning on the fly here, so if I can do it, you guys can. Save yourself some money. Get yourself two or three blades for these and then sharpen them and rotate them if you want, or one or two. And if you pack this with you, you bring a file and you can do this, figure out a way to clamp it with your knee or whatever in the bush. You can keep your saw going nicely, I would think. Let's start getting on that tooth. Shit. You also want to be careful not to slip while you're doing this, because as you do it, this saw, and not that these are ever dull, this will cut you worse than a knife. Take these things seriously. Especially if you're climbing, don't underestimate it. It'll cut you out of a tree faster than a chainsaw will. One swipe, you're falling. Oh, God. So we're getting into the last go on this side here. I got clamped a little low. Guess I'm going to have to try and edit this up a bit for you guys because she's probably getting along now takes a little while the first time. You know, the first time. My head's right in the light. There we go. A few teeth left on this side. And then we'll flip her. And I think I gotta switch positions too to make that work out effectively. I think these teeth are in better shape. The center of the saws are really gets beat on. All right, let's flip her. Speed round on the other side. You know, that is why I used this blade, because I just sharpened a bunch of those backwards. Stupid idiot. 
Now I'm sweating out of embarrassment. It's okay, we'll fix it. You know, <laughs> that actually reminds me of something someone once said to me. Something like, in working in trades and stuff, it's not about being the best and doing everything perfect all the time. We're all human. It's about how well you can fix a fuck up. Those are the guys that really make it. So what we're gonna do here is try and oh Jesus. Try and fix this fuck up. Fuck. <laughs> Run into the other tooth, that's always good. Mad Tom. You haven't really done me wrong yet. We're flying now. That's what I needed. Sip of beer. Okay, I'm done. That's it. All right. Let's test this thing out. Good little destroyed file out of the way. Same edge. Clamp it in the testing vise. Make sure it's in the frame. protect the beer. Oh my goodness. I tell you what, that bites very hard. I'm gonna do one more. There's a old kerf here I'm gonna cut just in front of that. And then I'm gonna put the newest blade unsharpened that I have on there. Wow, is that for big in there? That is cutting how a saw should cut. I'm not putting downward pressure on it. Usually I choke back on the handle and push forward. And I'm just pulling straight the weight of the saw is pulling that through there and digging in. Very aggressive, so that's kind of a sign of a bad sharpening job when it's too aggressive. It means there's a lot of discrepancies in these teeth and some of them are really digging and biting, but she cuts. So that's a start to sharpening. Let's throw the other one on here. Let's see what the difference looks like. I'm changing this right now. There's the new blade. I have not sharpened it. This is my newest silky blade. That's the one we just sharpened and took off. So I'm gonna throw this handle back on here. Not sharpening it. And we'll make another cut. Enjoying this, it's a good video. Okay, I'm gonna go on the outside of this kerf, fresh, uh, fresh cut. I bet you can hear the difference, I can feel it. Yeah, that's duller. Much, much, much less aggressive.
do one more. I'm really pushing on that too. I'm not, uh, I'm not just letting it pull through. I've got my hand choked back and I am pushing on that handle when I'm pulling through here and it's still slower, I think. So that should be a pretty visible difference. I'll do it one more time just for kicks. Do them back to back like that. But that, uh, I was pushing there, pushing down hard and going fast. And still wasn't coming anywhere near to what this one is. So, albeit for a sore wrist and palm from using that shitty little file to sharpen this, kind of just saved myself 15 bucks. <laughs> Plus I got three more blades, so I can sharpen these all up and then just rotate through them. Okay, here's the sharpened oldest blade. Extremely aggressive. So I think that's uh, conclusive. It worked. Kinda. Alright guys, so thanks for watching again. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like, subscribe button, and we'll be doing more of this stuff. We'll be getting back to the axes. I just want to do a real, uh, as far as this rehandling the fiskers goes, I want to do a real um, in the bush rehandling. So we're going to burn the head off. I don't know what that looks like. And then we're going to go simple. We're just going to attach it to a stick. I'm not going to try and make a board out of a tree or anything that complicated we're going to do what you would do if you needed this axe back in action um, quickly without expending too much energy but mosquitoes are horrible right now fucking work typical <clears throat> just busy and i'm going to wait until it's a little more enjoyable to be sitting out in the bush for hours because I, th I don't think it's going to be a quick process anyways thanks for watching again guys hope you enjoyed this got something useful out of it and i'll see you next time just a lot of hand sharpening Cheers.